Hey guys, VBad here with another V Plays, and we are taking out the iconic F86A Saber. This thing is mounting 650 cal machine guns that fire at a rate of 1200 rounds per minute, which means that we're getting some pretty serious volume of fire off of this thing, and they're all centrally located. Now the F86 Saber is kind of the holy grail of the Mustang line. This is the thing everybody eventually would like to pick up. And this is also a very iconic fighter in American history and was pretty much the uh, face of aerial combat when it came to the Korean War. So I want to pick up this military facility as soon as possible. The aircraft, obviously, very quick. We're like cruising along at over 500 miles an hour. Very good maneuverability for the altitude bracket we operate at. And looks like we have a ground attacker following us somewhere down there. There he is. We do have an enemy IL-40P specialized on the enemy team. That is a human, of course. You know, specialized would be a human being. Looks like we have a heavy inbound. This aircraft is really good at being able to counter heavy fighters. So hopefully we can make short work of this defense aircraft. And now I'm going to go after this 228 that looks like he's trying to go after the same defense aircraft that my ally is. I think we just pulled him off. There we go. We picked it up. Cool. I'm going to head towards the middle. We do have a bit of a dogfighting capability, so let's go ahead and get into the tussle in the middle. Uh, on our way to possibly picking up that man center. Want to get those offensive sights as soon as possible. Hello there, Seahawk. I really don't want to get into a frontal fight with an aircraft that has the level of maneuverability that one does. Oh, I've just put something on my six. What are you? Oh, it's an FJ-1. I'm glad we went into the maneuvering fight with him. We should be able to outpace his turn rate. This is going to be our predecessor at tier 9. Got the fire started. So we're at 60 points in the zone. Like to finish off this hunter. He's low health. Come on, just a little bit. No, nope. not quite enough. And is that still that same Seahawk that's trying to give me a hard time? We have a different light fighter. This one is going to be a key 162-3. Being that it's bot controlled though, it looks like it's chasing after a defense aircraft. And we managed to pick up the zone. Hey there. There is that ground attacker right there. I don't want to be the one to dive on this guy because this tail gunner will chew me up. But if I can throw some rounds into him, maybe I can get a lucky fire, at least assist here. Decent damage. Let's pull out. Let's come back in from another angle. I'm not worried about him picking up the zone, I just am worried about leaving him to his own devices. He is lit on fire. Oh, he's getting that tail gun around me. Might as well finish him off now. There we go. Everybody's coming back. I don't want to get into another head-on with that guy. Let's maneuver. Got good fire. Got him. Again, I'm sitting here fighting over an airfield when I know that that's not the critical target. That bomber just died, but he was not in the zone. I'm going up for the 228. I feel like that's a more critical move. Come on, go for the intercept. We need to get him before he gets those guns on. And I really didn't need to be here, but... Let's go for that guy. Maybe I can get the FJ-1 to give me a hand. Yeah, there we go. We'll get 12 of these 
50 cals on target. Nice. I mean, not super nice. I mean, it means that we're not going to be getting a whole lot of points for it. There we go. Good solid kill. These guns really do feel nice. They feel like they've got enough oomph to push out some serious damage. Let's go for the climb. This might be a bit ambitious. Because we really don't have our boost cooler going. So we are taking a bit of fire right here. But we're still pumping out some pretty consistent damage. And we managed to take out a JU-287. Granted, it wasn't any human controlled or anything like that. We are currently a glider. It's a beautiful roll rate. What a pretty plane. Get some of that cooler going. Oh, there we go. Solid match. 287 capture points, five aircraft destroyed. We'll throw up a GG to the other guy. Uh, just let him know. Hey man, solid fight. Uh, him and I had comparable scores. It was just, you know, placement and timing. We'll take a look and see what he was doing throughout that battle. It looks like he went to the command center. He might have just had some bad luck. Uh, we did pick up the Akamatsu medal for getting over 400 capture points, McCampbell medal, and 450 capture point for in a single battle. So I'm pretty happy about that. A solid, solid flight. The F-86 Sabre feels very good to fly. Uh, and honestly, the FJ-1 does as well. It seems like it's underpowered if you were to try and go after like a heavy fighter and compare it to like an 1101 or if you compare it to the guns that you find on the MiG-15. You just feel like you're, you're doing consistent damage, but it, it does take time to kill something with machine guns. And it's very incremental. While the 20s, you see a lot of health coming off very quickly, but the guns will overheat nearly as quickly as they're ripping off damage. So the burst damage seems to be a favorite of, well, pretty much everybody. I mean, I like it as well. And then the MiG-15 gets that 37 millimeter accompanied by two 23s, and the 37 will really take off a lot of big chunks of health very rapidly. Again, overheating quickly, but... When you're going up against another light fighter, you don't need to do a ton of damage um, over a long period of time, just in a quick run when you do get that chance to get guns on, and it's very satisfying. Well, with this aircraft, you saw when I was going up against that Ki-162-3, I really just had to let fly with the machine guns and hope for the best. Now, 480 damage per second is not bad, but if you were to do a quick comparison with a bunch of other Tier 10 light fighters um the 1101 is 800 and even if we look at the 252 from the other day that's 700 that key we went up against in a head-on which is a little bit of a questionable move uh he's also sporting 480 but you're looking at uh 30 millimeter cannon so he's getting some big chunk damage coming out as well 660 coming out of the swift so there are some pretty good damage numbers coming out of these other platforms. And again, we're talking about some solid burst damage with this 37 millimeter pumping out 300 damage per second. And that's going to give you a really big chunk of your health and especially some serious critical damage. Now, don't get me wrong. This thing is going to have a chance to light people on fire. And we did definitely see that last match. Like I said, we were going to take a look at some of these stats here and see what exactly happened. We managed to rake in 500 capture points, 200 while defending, 300 while attacking. And we managed to kill 11 aircraft, one of which was a bomber. Honestly, I'm surprised we were able to take out that JU-287, but it did indeed happen. And you see that we definitely started quite a few fires and managed to get 12 criticals during that run. But we also haven't run for fire chance on our gun site. I am looking to re-roll that, but 400 credits is a little steep considering my recent purchases of other aircraft. Now, with this guy, let's see what exactly happened with him. He did manage to pick up the command center as well as the forward airstrip, and he did get 325 capture points, 40 of which was for defending, because he did manage to kill 
three aircraft, one of which was another attack airframe. Uh, that's probably where the defense came into play. Honestly, I would have favored going towards the military base before I would have went to the command center. Uh, it is kind of a, a tough call if you don't necessarily know how the battle's going to go or if you think that your bots might be able to at least contest it long enough for you to be able to get over there. But something probably happened where an aircraft died overhead. He did manage to put up some pretty decent damage against ground targets here. You can see... Oh, you know, I, I'm going to call the issue here immediately. And the issue I think he might have been having is I see a lot of small ground targets, which means he was taking a lot of the AA sites out completely. I do fire at the AA sites and I do take out the guns, but I don't really bother with taking out the whole site. I save those air to ground munitions for going after some of the more prize targets so your special ground targets your armored medium targets and it, it looks like you probably took the long road to try and pick up that command center and that's probably what happened just taking a look at this from a quick glance and that would also explain the relatively low ground damage number now this isn't a knock on the individual because they still managed to post a pretty decent score here but i'm willing to bet that they could have done a bit better if they managed to get some of those bombs and rockets on target on some of the radar sites so uh, just critical view uh, I do the same thing on my losses I take a look and I kind of evaluate what should I have done here and uh, most of the time it's that I'm not capping enough uh, I say that the ABCs of this game is always be capping uh, it's not my own phrase I believe I picked it up from somebody else but it is a very good way to go about playing this game you should always be working on the next zone uh, there are times you get caught up defending a very key site. Uh, a lot of times it'll end up being the mine in certain situations when there's a singular mine. But uh, generally speaking, going and grabbing another site and kind of putting the enemy in a position where they have to cap faster than you. And now you're just trying to be a better pilot, making things equal. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that and taking a look at a very capable airframe. And I really do like this thing and I wish I flew it more. I would love to be able to specialize it. Uh, and once I specialize it, I'll be able to get a little bit more speed, a little bit more maneuverability. And then the ability to restart my engine would be great. Anyways, hope you guys enjoy the video. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.